program out ratchets, which are considered to be a more advanced mechanism that not uh, many or really any beginner team should necessarily be using. It's not necessary to build an effective robot, but nonetheless, I'll cover it. So here we got an interesting contraption. Uh, there's an axle going through these two pieces. One is a gear, and the other is this 6-2 sprocket. Okay, this gear has uh, these green inserts in them that allow the axle to turn smoothly in them, while this sprocket has these gray inserts inserted into them. Okay, that makes the axle turn with the sprocket. Okay, and then we have this screw here, which acts as a one-way gate. And I'll explain that in a sec. And with this whole setup, we're able to create a kind of mechanism where when the motor spins one direction, the mechanism actually moves. When the motor spins the other direction, the mechanism does not activate. Okay, and compounding this can actually allow you to power two different mechanisms with one motor. Okay, so get into it. Um, all right, I'm gonna try to set up. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a new tool to show off how this uh, ratchet works. Oh, something to note is that there's a rubber band pulling on this screw over here, okay, that's pulling it in this direction, okay, and that is creating tension on this screw to try to always push into the sprocket. Now, it's long enough that it can't push all the way over that it actually gets to the other side, but nonetheless, it pushes into the sprocket, so when the sprocket turns clockwise, it pushes into the screw, right? When it turns anti-clockwise, the screw is pushed to the side because it's only being held there by the tension of a rubber band and will pop back into place for the next uh, tooth. Okay. So you can imagine that clicking action when it spins, uh, when this sprocket spins anti-clockwise. As I'm showing here. I'll reset it. Okay. And then Imagine now this sprocket turns clockwise. What happens? Well, everything spins because now the sprocket's pushing into the screw, which pushes into the gear, and then everything spins clockwise. Mm hmm. So, what does that mean? I mean, so you have an axle going through both of these mechanisms, right? And that Axel probably has some other gear somewhere else on it that is being powered by a motor, okay? I mean, there's many different ways to apply it, but you have this kind of one-way gate system so that, well, an example I was just starting to explain. Let's say you have that axle through it, right? And it's being spun by a motor. When the motor spins one way, okay? Uh, let's start with anti-clockwise. The sprocket just turns and clicks over the screw and nothing happens. Right? It doesn't turn an actual mechanism, for example. But when the motor spins clockwise, right, now this sprocket is pushing into the screw, and that causes this gear to turn. And this gear, let's say, is meshed with some other gear, and then that actually causes a mechanism to spin. Right? Or maybe not even necessarily you have another gear involved. You just have like part of maybe a 4 by lift attached to this gear. And if this gear doesn't spin, the lift doesn't move. But if this gear spins, well then yeah, the lift moves. And so it's powered only when the motor spins one direction. And when the motor spins the other direction, nothing happens. Right? Now, why is this useful? Uh, I'm going to go open up a file. Example to show you how it can be useful. Okay, here we go. Uh, I will note that this CAD file was CADed using a different CAD style and not even the same library, so it might look a bit funky. And yeah, these things here are called joints, uh, ignore them. But this CAD file has, oh, and the chain did not come out, right? I guess some error with it. But okay, this CAD file here has two interesting creative applications of ratchets. 
Okay, so try to follow with me here. Uh, we have one ratchet here where you can see uh, the screw is set to turn into the sprocket. And we have actually more sets of rubber bands going all around this. There is a rubber band pulling this whole arm, okay, counterclockwise this way, all right? And you have the rubber band itself that's tensioning and spracking. Okay, so let's think about this. The motor, when it turns clockwise, right, it just clicks over this ratchet and it pulls along all of this chain that is supposed to be wrapped around the sprocket. And that spins the wheel at the end of it. Okay, and this allows you to intake the ball. It's like contacting the ball. And also think that at first, while this sprocket starts to spin clockwise, uh, because you have the rubber band tensioning this whole arm to also spin clockwise. Did I ever put a revolute joint in here? No, I didn't. I wasn't smart back then. But um, take my word for it, I guess. I can't model it properly. This rubber band here, right, is pulling this arm uh, clockwise, okay? And so think about it, right? This sprocket turns slightly, the arm just follows, right? Because you have all this rubber band tensioning the arm to turn, okay? So when the motor spins clockwise, it pulls the arms towards the center. Well, okay, the rubber bands do, but it pulls the arms towards the center and then it spins the chain, spinning this wheel at the end. Then this wheel is able to intake the ball. Now when it spins, anti-clockwise, this sprocket gets caught on the screw. Instead of what it does is it starts resisting the tension of those rubber bands and starts pushing the arms outward to more like a position like this. But if you kept spinning it, right, the arms could retract all the way to about like another, nearly another 180 degrees to over here. And well, yeah, that's quite amazing, right? We have, with one motor, we have managed to make a mechanism, well, in a bunch of rubber bands, we have managed to make a mechanism that is able to intake these uh, balls, okay? But it can store itself in this retracted position here, but it can also swing out the arms to the front to expand at the beginning of the match, okay? This is done with the power of ratchets, okay? So that's one interesting application, and I mean, just stop this and like the mirror image of all that's done on this side, right? So we got two of those things working. Another example of ratchet. Okay, here in this mechanism, uh, we have another ratchet. And basically the thinking here was, when the motor spins one way, it will power uh, this Holy crap, okay, my CAD got really fried when I tried to transfer the file. This is not in the correct place, but, okay. <laughs> Oops, sprocket should be like lined up with this gear. But anyways, uh, when the, we have a ratchet set up in there, you can kind of see it, right? When the motor spins one direction, it would spin this roller and the roller chain to it, so that's also the bottom roller, anti-clockwise. Right. Okay. And when the motor spins the other direction, uh, it would just click over this gear and not activate it. But as it it is also driving this sprocket over here, which is small and hidden. Okay, the ball wouldn't actually hit it in real life. Uh, is chained to this sprocket. Okay, because we have another ratchet here. When the motor spins the other direction, it would actually power this mechanism back here and open the trap door. Okay, now the trap door closes by the tensioning of rubber bands, kind of in a similar way of how this uh, intake roller worked here, right? Uh, it pulled, the rubber bands pull it back into position. But when the motor spinning the other direction is resisting the motion of those rubber bands and is opening the trap door. So I'm able to make a mechanism that spins these rollers and opens the trapdoor all with one motor. 
right? Another amazing application of ratchets. And I will also put some YouTube links in the video description to show other additional examples of ratchets. Okay. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool in concept. Now, what happened in reality? These ratchets uh, cause the motor to overheat quite quickly because you create a lot of friction inevitably by having this screw constantly banging against the sprocket, resisting its movement while it turns, okay, because it's being tensioned down a rubber band. If you make the rubber band too loose, the sprocket is not going to click back into place. Sorry, the, the screw is not going to click back into place and act as a proper ratchet. But if you make the rubber band too tight, it just creates a lot of torque in the, a lot of friction in the system and your motor has to uh, exert a lot of torque to overcome that friction to keep the mechanism working and that usually causes it to overheat very quickly and then it stops working and once your motors overheat you're kind of toast so in later versions of my robot for this year's competition that we're looking at uh i did not use ratchets because of this overheat problem but it you come up with a low friction design utilizing this idea or you just don't overuse them too much you put them on some kind of mechanism that doesn't need to be constantly used and then you just apply some kind of motor strength there yeah it would be a good application of ratchets